The Kingdom of Northumbria was a medieval Anglian kingdom in what is now northern England and southeast Scotland, which subsequently became an earldom in a unified English kingdom. The name reflects the approximate southern limit to the kingdom's territory, the Humber estuary. Northumbria was formed by Ethelfrith in central Great Britain in Anglo-Saxon times. At the beginning of the 7th century, the two kingdoms of Bernicia and Daria were unified. At its height, the kingdom extended at least from just south of the Humber to the River Mersey into the 4th, and there is some evidence that it may have been much greater. The later earldom came about when the southern part of Northumbria was lost to the Danelaw. The northern part at first retained its status as a kingdom but when it became subordinate to the Danish kingdom, it had its powers curtailed to that of an earldom and retained that status when England was reunited by the Wessex-led reconquest of the Danelaw. The earldom was bounded by the River Tees in the south and the River Tweed in the north. Much of this land was debated between England and Scotland, but the earldom of Northumbria was eventually recognised as part of England by the Anglo-Scottish Treaty of York in 1237. On the northern border, Berwick-upon-Tweed, which is north of the Tweed but had changed hands many times, was defined as subject to the laws of England by the Wales and Berwick Act 1746. The land once part of Northumbria at its peak is now divided by modern administrative boundaries. Northeast England, Yorkshire and the Humber. Northwest England includes Cumbria. Though Cumbria was more of a Northumbrian colony with its own client kings for most of its history in the early medieval era, Scottish borders, West Lothian, Edinburgh, Midlothian and East Lothian. Northumbria is also used in the names of some regional institutions, particularly the police force and a university based in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. The local environment agency office, located in Newcastle Business Park, also uses the term Northumbria to describe its patch. Otherwise, the term is not the official name for the UK and EU region of North East England. Kingdom. See also. List of monarchs of Northumbria and timeline of Northumbria. Northumbria was originally formed from the union of two independent kingdoms. Bernicia and Daria. Bernicia covered lands north of the Tees, while Daria corresponded roughly to modern-day Yorkshire. Bernicia and Daria were first united by Ethelfrith, a king of Bernicia who conquered Daria around the year 604. He was defeated and killed around the year 616 in battle at the River Idol by Radwild of East Anglia, who installed Edwin, the son of Iella, a former king of Daria, as king. Edwin, who accepted Christianity in 627, soon grew to become the most powerful king in England. He was recognised as Brettwalder and conquered the Isle of Man and Gwynedd in northern Wales. He was, however, himself defeated by an alliance of the exiled king of Gwynedd, Cadwallon ap Cadvan, and Penda, king of Mercia, at the Battle of Hatfield Chase in 633. King Oswald after Edwin's death, Northumbria was split between Bernicia, where Enfrith, a son of Ethelfrith, took power, and Daria, where a cousin of Edwin, Osric, became king. Cumbria tended to remain a country frontier with the Britons. Both of these rulers were killed during the year that followed, as Cadwallon continued his devastating invasion of Northumbria. After the murder of Enfrith, his brother, Oswald, backed by warriors sent by Domnall Breck of Dalriata, defeated and killed Cadwallon at the Battle of Heavenfield in 634. Oswald expanded his kingdom considerably. He incorporated Gododine lands northwards up to the Firth of Forth and also gradually extended his reach westward, encroaching on the remaining Cumbric-speaking kingdoms of Regard and Strathclyde. Thus, Northumbria became not only part of modern England's far north, but also covered much of what is now the southeast of Scotland.
King Oswald reintroduced Christianity to the kingdom by appointing Street. Aidan, an Irish monk from the Scottish island of Iona to convert his people. This led to the introduction of the practices of Celtic Christianity. A monastery was established on Lindisfarne. War with Mercia continued, however, in 642, Oswald was killed by the Mercians under Pender at the Battle of Macefield. In 655, Penda launched a massive invasion of Northumbria, aided by the sub-king of Daria, Ethelwald, but suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of an inferior force under Oswiu, Oswald's successor, at the Battle of Winwood. This battle marked a major turning point in Northumbrian fortunes. Penda died in the battle, and Oswiu gained supremacy over Mercia, making himself the most powerful king in England. Religious consolidation In the year 664 the Synod of Whitby was held to discuss the controversy regarding the timing of the Easter festival. Dispute had arisen between the practices of the Celtic Church influencing Northumbria and those of the Roman Church predominate throughout southern England and Western Europe. Eventually, Northumbria was persuaded to move to the Roman practice and the Celtic Bishop Coleman of Lindisfarne returned to Iona. The episcopal seat of Northumbria was transferred from Lindisfarne to York, which indicates the growing religious, political and economic importance of connections to southern Great Britain. Decline of the Kingdom of Northumbria Northumbria lost control of Mercia in the late 650s, after a successful revolt under Penda's son Wolf here, but it retained its dominant position until it suffered a disastrous defeat of the hands of the pigs at the Battle of Dunnecton in 685. Northumbria's king, ECG Frith, was killed, and its power in the north was gravely weakened. The peaceful reign of Aldfrith, Ecfrith's half-brother and successor, did something to limit the damage done. But it is from this point that Northumbria's power began to decline, and chronic instability followed Aldfrith's death in 704. In 867 Northumbria became the northern kingdom of the Danelaw. After its conquest by the brothers half Dan Ragnarsson and Iver the Boneless who installed an Englishman, Egbert, as a puppet king, Despite the pillaging of the kingdom, Viking rule brought lucrative trade to Northumbria, especially at their capital York. The kingdom passed between English, Norse and Norse Gaelic kings until it was finally absorbed by King Edred after the death of the last independent Northumbrian monarch, Eric Bloodaxe. In 954, Eildormanships and Earldoms in Northumbria, after the English regained the territory of the former kingdom, Scots invasions reduced Northumbria to an earldom stretching from the Humber to the Tweed. Northumbria was disputed between the emerging kingdoms of England and Scotland. The land north of the Tweed was finally ceded to Scotland in 1018 as a result of the Battle of Carham. Yorkshire and Northumberland were first mentioned as separate in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in 1065. Norman invasion and partition of the earldom William the Conqueror became King of England in 1066. He realized he needed to control Northumbria, which had remained virtually independent of the kings of England. To protect his kingdom from Scottish invasion, in 1067, William appointed Copsey as Earl. However, just five weeks into his reign as Earl, Copsey was murdered by Osulf II of Bamborough. To acknowledge the remote independence of Northumbria and ensure England was properly defended from the Scots, William gained the allegiance of both the Bishop of Durham and the Earl and confirmed their powers and privileges. However, anti-Norman rebellions followed. William therefore attempted to install Robert Comine, a Norman noble, as the Earl of Northumbria, but before Comine could take up office, he and his 700 men were massacred in the city of Durham. In revenge, the conqueror led his army in a bloody raid into Northumbria, an event that became known as the Harrying of the North. Ethelwyn, the Anglo-Saxon Bishop of Durham, tried to flee Northumbria at the time of the raid, with Northumbrian treasures. The bishop was subsequently caught, imprisoned, and later died in confinement. His seat was left vacant.
Rebellions continued, and William's son William Rufus decided to partition Northumbria. William of St. Carolef was made Bishop of Durham, and was also given the powers of Earl for the region south of the rivers Tyne and Derwent, which became the County Palatine of Durham. The remainder, to the north of the rivers, became Northumberland, where the political powers of the bishops of Durham were limited to only certain districts, and the earls continued to rule as clients of the English throne. The city of Newcastle was founded by the Normans in 1080 to control the region by holding the strategically important crossing point of the river, Tyne. Subsequent history The Northumbrian region continued a history of revolt and rebellion against the government, as seen in the rising of the North in Tudor times. A major reason was the strength of Catholicism in the area after the Reformation. Rural, thinly populated, and sharing a border with an often hostile Scotland, the region became a wild place where reavers raided across the border and outlaws took refuge from justice. However, after the union of the crowns of Scotland and England under King James VI an eye peace was largely established. After the restoration, many inhabitants of the Northumbrian region supported the Jacobite cause. Culture Northumbria during its Golden Age was the most important centre of religious learning and arts in the British Isles. Initially the kingdom was evangelised by Irish monks from the Celtic Church, based at Iona in modern Scotland, which led to a flowering of monastic life. Lindisfarne on the east coast was founded from Iona by St. Aidan in about 635 and was to remain the major Northumbrian monastic centre, producing figures like Wilfred and St. Cuthbert. The nobleman Benedict Biscop had visited Rome and headed the monastery at Canterbury in Kent and his twin foundation monk Wermoth Jarrow Abbey added, a direct Roman influence to Northumbrian culture, and produced figures such as Seolfrith and Bede. Northumbria played an important role in the formation of insular art, a unique style combining Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Pictish. Byzantine and other elements, producing works such as the Lindisfarne Gospels, St. Cuthbert Gospel, the Ruthwell Cross and Bucastle Cross, and later the Book of Kells which was probably created at Iona. After the Synod of Whitby in 664 Roman Church practices officially replaced the Celtic ones but the influence of the Celtic style continued, the most famous examples of this being the Lindisfarne Gospels. The Venerable Bede wrote his Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum in Monkwermouth Jarrow, and much of it focuses on the kingdom. The devastating Viking raid on Lindisfarne in 793 marked the beginning of a century of Viking invasions that severely checked all Anglo-Saxon culture, and heralded the end of Northumbria's position as a centre of influence. Although in the years immediately following confident works like the Easby Cross were still being produced, a bullion weight economy was still in use at the end of the 9th century AD, as demonstrated in the 29 silver ingots found in the Beedale Hoard, along with sword fittings and necklaces in gold and silver. Northumbria has its own Czech or tartan, which is similar to many ancient tartans. Modern border tartans are almost invariably a bold black and white check, but historically the light squares were the yellowish color of untreated wool, with the dark squares any of a range of dark grays, blues, greens or browns, hence the alternative name of border drab. At a distance the checks blend together making the fabric ideal camouflage for stalking game. Language Apart from standard English, Northumbria has a series of closely related but distinctive dialects, descended from the early Germanic languages of the Angles, of which 80% of its vocabulary is derived, and Vikings with a few Celtic and Latin loanwords. The Scots language began to diverge from early Northumbrian Middle English, which was called English as late as the early 16th century referred to Scottish Gaelic. There are many similarities between modern Scots dialects and those of Northumbria. The major Northumbrian dialects are Geordie, Northern, Western, Southern or Pitmatic, Macem, Smoggy and Tyke. 
To an outsider's ear the similarities far outweigh the differences between the dialects. As an example of the differences, in the softer South County Durham, where side the English book is pronounced buke, in Geordie it becomes book, while in the Northumbrian it is buke.